Hey everybody, I'm Amy. I'm Dan. And we are the Hustle Couple coming at you today with the Daily Grind on a Tuesday, the first day of February. You know what that means, right? It is officially hashtag Fabric February. So February. February. <laughs> yes. Um, we are going to be explaining everything you ever wanted to know about fabrics and we're afraid to ask. Yeah, because <laughs> a lot of us clothing resellers, even some hard goods are made of fabric. Uh, we have a lot of questions and, okay, for example, when I go to sell similar on eBay, almost none of the time are the fabric details filled in. What do you mean by fabric detail? Like what kind of knit it is or what kind of material it is. They, nothing. I think people don't know. I definitely don't know. <laughs> so we are here for you. Uh, we're full-time resellers out of Dallas, Texas, if you're new here. And every single day, we're going to do a little lesson on fabric before we get to our big shipments of the day and little baby bins hauls. Yes. We've got a lot for you each day, and hopefully you're working along with us, and hopefully you can learn something. I would recommend starting out February. This is Mojo. He's our cat. He just woke up. He's waking up. Uh, I would recommend starting out with a notepad and writing down little notes and you can have your fabric resource all right there for you for free from me. I do have a degree in theatrical design, in lighting, scenery, and costume design and I s my main profession before, before reselling is costume design and fashion design for TV, film, and theater. Yes. So I have a little bit of knowledge here and I want to share it with you for free. Okay, there are two types of fabric. <laughs> All right, I can't concentrate. Sorry. It's very professional. Sorry. There are two types of fibers. Fibers are the little bitty things that make fabric. We're not going to talk about fabric until we cover fibers. Okay. Okay, got it? I think so. There are natural fibers. Yes. Okay, and there are synthetic fibers. Okay. And that's it. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, got it. <laughs> so <laughs> the natural fibers come in two forms. Uh-oh. Okay. Uh-oh. Okay, all right. You can have a plant fiber uh -huh. or an animal fiber. Okay, I'm, okay. I'm still with you. All right, okay, cool. <laughs> so plant fibers are things like? Cotton. Cotton, perfect. Uh, and animal fibers are things like? Wool. Okay, good. I thought you were going to say leather. I was going to be like? No. <laughs> uh, we're just talking fibers, so things that can make fabric. Uh, so wool, angora, any kind of fur would be part Cam of that camel category. Hair. Right, camel hair. Yep. Okay. Uh, linen. Where does that go? Linen, uh, linen goes in the natural. It is natural category. Uh, so cotton is a little bud that's picked, and we're going to talk more about cotton in the coming days. Uh, but linen is from the stalk, so it's longer and tougher. Okay. But it's still from a plant, so okay. that's interesting. I think a lot of people might not know that. Uh -huh, uh, we're going to go through each of the fibers very quickly, and I'm going to tell you about their burn rate. And it's really important to know this because I'm telling you, you're going to be shocked. Okay. Okay. So the burn test for cotton and linen, they burn very quickly. Like You mean actually like set on fire burn? Yes. Okay. Right. <laughs> yes. So in the fashion industry, we do a burn test. We don't know what a fabric is. You can burn it and kind of figure it out really, really fast. Uh, this also tells you how much heat you can put on something. Cotton is very strong. You can put a lot of heat on it, but not flames. Flames will incinerate it. Okay. Right. Some of the fibers we're going to talk about will not burn. Hmm. Okay. okay. Uh, then the animal fibers like wool, angora, that kind of a thing, yep. they curl away from the flames. So like the flames here and they're like. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like if you've ac accidentally ever burned your hair, like you kind of. That's exactly mm -hmm. what it smells like. It smells like burned hair. Okay. Because it's and hair. it curls away. Yes, yeah, exactly totally right. Yep. Okay. It burns slowly. It leaves lumpy, bristled. So you can't put a lot of heat on wool or it burns your hair. So like ironing wool, no, no, don't, don't do, do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> okay, now silk. Silk is its own natural fiber. It's its own category. It right. doesn't come from a plant. Right, okay. And it, it's not really the fur of an animal. It's the byproduct of a moth. Mm -hmm. So the moth makes a silk worm. Well, there's a worm that turns into a moth. Okay. And that so process, is... that metamorphosis... Uh, create it's a silkworm. You've heard of this yeah. probably. It creates silk, which is the silk fiber that then we we make into these gorgeous garments. That's it's, insane. To it's me. just like remnants. Yeah. <laughs> of a worm. 
<laughs> that turned into a kind of evil butterfly. Yes. Okay, cool. Now we have manufactured fibers, synthetics. Okay. These are so freaking important, and I think that we think a lot of things are natural fibers when they're not, when they're actually synthetic. So we're gonna go through these. Sweet. Mojo, okay. All right, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Manufactured fibers, I have this as a visual. Visual aids, yay! Are things like polyester, acetate, things like that that you see, lyocell, any Nylon, of that. Nylon, acrylic. Nylon. This is a this is a roll of plastic, and this is what happens. This is not the exact plastic that's made to make fabric. This is PLA for a three D printer, but it's for a visual purpose. It right. looks like this. It looks like it, they melt it down into a liquid, whatever the whatever the material they want. Right. Nothing it, natural is in this. Okay, right. it's all chemicals. And then, yeah, it's melted down, and then it's extruded into it, a this. super thin. Like this is you know a very thick version, obviously. Right. But you take this and you extrude it down into very, very, very thin fibers, and right. then you end up with so we have extra fiber. We well, right? the fibers is the liquid. Oh, I see. Fibers, okay. because what happens is we we loom this stuff into yarn. Okay. So this is a this would be the yarn. It's plastic yarn versus like yarn yarn. Right. Okay. So we have two different things making our clothes, and I need you to get your head around that because it's hard <laughs> because we get tricked. I'm going to show you. We're going to have a little game show in a second. Ooh, fun. Yes. Okay, so, so the synthetic fibers are the cellulistic one, cellulistic ones, uh -huh. and those are rayon acetate, triacetate, lyocell, which is also a brand name called Tensile. Right. That's your chambray shirts, all of that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Rayon is incredibly popular, even in luxury fabrics. Yeah. It's plastic. It's not natural at all. Right. Rayon is also very, very prone to shrinking and it's it's really hard uh, wrinkling it's just not a pretty nice thing but it drapes well oh okay so um these the ones that i just mentioned do breathe well they're a little bit more airy mm -hmm. in nature so it's not like you're wearing you know a, a protective chemical suit or something so they're really really popular in fact i think probably the shirt i'm wearing looks like cotton but it's probably not Okay, it's probably one of these. It's probably rayon, let's be honest. Yeah. It's from Old Navy. Probably a blend at best. Okay, the burn test. <laughs> rayon does not shrink away from the flame. Oh, it goes right for it. <laughs> it burns very rapidly and it smells like burning wood. Really? Interesting. Don't buy your kids rayon pajamas. Okay. Are they the ones that have the tags that yes. keep away from fire yes. in giant red letters? That's exactly right. Okay. <laughs> okay, the other type of synthetic fibers are petroleum <laughs> byproducts. Yeah. This ties into our discussion yesterday about recycling. Neither of these materials can be recycled. They just can't. They just don't biodegrade. So they're made out of petroleum byproducts, natural gas, alcohol, and coal. All of our favorite things in one. Yay. Work to make nylon, polyester, acrylic, mode acrylic, and spandex. All of those are made yeah, those are all plastics and... Made in really, really, really harmful ways. Yeah, the majority of plastics, with very rare exception, are all petroleum-based. So, I mean, there are newer technologies out now that are like cornstarch-based plastics and that kind of stuff. But everything in clothing, like polyester and acetates and all that kind of stuff, is all petroleum. Right, so these are the actual plastics. I should show you that this now. Yeah. <laughs> the actual plastic clothes that I'm about to mention. The first ones are made from like a bunch of junk. A bunch of junk put together, squeezed through a tube, and they make a filament. But this, the synthetic, the petroleum byproducts, these are actual, literally it looks like this. This, okay? Uh, nylon, polyester, acrylic, modex, spandex. The... Polyester shrinks away from a flame. It smells like a chemical odor if you burn it. Acrylic shrinks away from flame and burns rapidly and melts and smells acidic. So these are all important things. If you don't know what a fabric is and you put a flame to it or if you put an iron to it, have you ever tried to iron polyester? Whoa. Uh -huh. Whoa. <laughs> the idea behind polyester in the 70s was that it was wash and wear. You didn't, it didn't get wrinkles because it's plastic. There's nothing really to wrinkle. Okay. Uh, it doesn't really shrink away or grow or stretch or anything. Uh, they're not breathable fabrics because it's plastic. I mean, really, mm, not great. Yeah. Very, very bad for the environment. Okay, but we see them in almost every single thing we wear these days. It's a blend, so they take something like rayon, which is a cellulosic fiber, 
they'll mix it with a synthetic and then they'll put cotton 20%. And so you do the cotton blend. <laughs> But really, when you blend all these things together, no matter what, if there is a synthetic fiber in it, it cannot be recycled. They can't separate the fibers. Okay, once it's all been put together, right? It's so fine. Okay, <clears throat> so we've got, we've talked about the animal fibers, we've talked about silk, we've talked about the plant fibers, we've talked about the cellulosic fibers. Um, sometimes they're made from plant matter, it's just junk. Sometimes it's sawdust. Literally sawdust. It just depends on what, what they decide to put into it and squeeze through a tube. And then the last one is synthetic. Okay, so all of those are used to create a yarn, which is used to create a fabric. And the fabric can be a knit or a weave. And we'll talk about that tomorrow. We're gonna get into all types of fabrics. But okay. here comes the game show. All right. Okay, so which one of these, don't look at the names, just don't look at the names, okay? Okay, all right. Which one of these yarns, just look at the yarns. Uh -huh do you think is natural? Um. Yeah, feel them. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Do okay. they all feel pretty soft? You know what, they all feel almost exactly the same. They all, they're, they're springy, they're soft. Not, none of these are just like scratchy. Um, I, I really, I really don't know. You think all of them are natural? I, I mean, they, f I, I really don't, they feel, okay quote unquote, feel natural. I don't, I don't so know. So this is where, this is why I'm doing this lesson. As basic as it might sound, it's very tricky. Yeah. None of these are. Shut up. These what? are all, yes, none of these, the, okay, this one is called America's Most Popular Fashion Yarn. It's all fuzzy, can you tell? It's like, ooh, I wanna make a scarf out of that. Yeah, you can see the fuzz. Y'all, this is 98% acrylic and 2% polyester. Oh, so it's all plastic. The whole thing. Fully. The whole thing. Fully fake. <laughs> That's insane to me because This like, is plastic. This yarn is this. They but, made it into this. But it's soft. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Okay. Okay. All right. This one is called Flicka something, something, something. And she's wearing this fuzzy hat. Mm -hmm. This is, wait, let's do this one first. Touch of alpaca. Oh, okay. oh, that's nice. Touch of alpaca. So alpaca is, that's an animal fiber. It is an animal fiber. This is 90% acrylic and 10% alpaca. Wow. Okay, so mostly plastic and a little bit of alpaca. A little bit, but it feels just like the plastic plastic. It does. It feels exactly I mean, it. Like if you want to really like, if it's a little bit softer to the touch, so you can tell that there's a little bit nicer stuff in there, but... I, I would not have guessed that this was mostly synthetic. Okay, then the flicka is... You, you freaking out there, buddy? You want the alpaca? Mm. Oh, my <laughs> kittens love yarn. Maybe it's a kitten again. Okay. Oh, my gosh, you guys. What is this one? 50% cotton. Great. All right. 50% cotton, and it's less fluffy. Yep. 50% polyester. A hundred percent not recyclable in a standard way. H and M is working on ways, and so are other companies on working on ways to regenerate these into new, new fabrics. But okay. you can't separate this. You can't separate the cotton from the polyester once it's in a yarn like this. Okay, this yarn. Okay. Do you see this? Yes. Thing of yarn. Yes. Oh, move you your, move your face. You some. Block your face. There we go. It's just very white, so it's re it's, it's very white. Of... It's very soft. Yep. This is a hundred percent sustainable merino oh. wool. Okay, so that is all natural. But compare it to fiber. this and tell me how people. It's so easy to get confused. It really is. I mean, just visually, it's the same. It looks visually the same. Does it feel the same to me? It feels very, very similar. It does. I mean, like I said, if you want to get really nitty picky, nit gritty, whatever I'm trying to say <laughs> about it, <laughs> um, the the merino is definitely softer. Like you can, if you really feel it, right. it's softer for sure. But like if you're just quickly touching, da, 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 it's really difficult to tell the difference between these two. So, uh, we know that wool holds heat and you can... <clears throat> He's, he's good. <laughs> so, for example, a sweater made out of merino wool is going to be much more breathable than a sweater made out of acetate and polyester. Yeah. Or acrylic and acrylic, polyester. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 
so I think it's really important for us as resellers to know our craft. I think it's a craft. Sure. I and would we have to that. know with what we're selling and how to launder it and what's breathable. So if you write in your description, even if it's an open knit, breathable, it's not breathable if it's made of plastic. It's not breathable <laughs> at all. Mojo knows. He's like sick of hearing about this. Yeah. <laughs> So hopefully this is helpful. Um, tomorrow we're going to talk about the difference between a knit uh -huh. and a weave. Oh. And it's, again, it's like game show worthy. It's, right. It's tricky. Yes, it is. Um, before I started helping to resell clothing, I had zero idea what any of these terms mean, and I'm still pretty fuzzy on them. So this is helping me as well. <laughs> right? It's all about learning and, and knowing. And you like you're saying, the, the distinct differences and feeling and touching. Because yeah. if we can feel a fiber before we have to look at the brand, we can go faster. Yeah, I do that with sport coats for sure. Like I just walk along the rack and I just feel the shoulder. And if it doesn't feel nice yeah. i won't i won't even look at the tag so practice that maybe go into a place that uses natural fibers like an eileen fisher store or even a department store and feel the high-end stuff and then go into like rue 21 or forever 20 rue 21 forever 21 is that right mm -hmm. same mm -hmm. go in one of the fast fashion <laughs> stores and feel it feel their sweaters compared to a merino wool sweater yeah. and just try to understand and familiarize yourself with the differences and why things cost what they do. So we had a troll come at us for a Pima <laughs> cotton shirt. Well, we have cotton week coming, so we'll talk about cottons. Yeah. And cursing at us that we have it priced at $100. Well, that shirt was sustainably farmed, sustainably made, handcrafted, all the things. Right, and it retails for like close to $1,000. So a t-shirt isn't just a t-shirt when it has all these things going for it in the fibers. So right. then you can explain yourself to your customers or even in your descriptions. Yeah. Hopefully it's helpful, you guys. Let us know. Comment below. That's right. Okay, what do we have to do now? We gotta Shipping? go ship it. Damn. And then we have a mini bins haul. <gasps> we went again today. We did. Stay tuned. Action. Action. <clears throat> All right. We have six things shipping out today. They're good ones, though. They are good ones. But I mean, like, educationally good. All right, well, We're all about the education I'm today. I'm gonna let you start with... This little guy. This is Eeyore. Look at his face. We have so many Eeyores. He's got tags and everything. So this cute. one has, um, he owed. He's an owed one. And he has tags from the Disney store. I don't list him as new because this tag is kind of, you know, not in the best condition. But I did uh, enter the UPC. I have a scanner, but you could also just enter the number. So if someone's looking for this exact Eeyore, it will come up. I always recommend doing that if you do have the UPC number. Uh, his tail is removable. What? Put that in the title because that's a selling feature. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we just measured him. He's 14 inches. He's got some heft to him. I don't think he's first class. Most of our plush is first class, but this guy, I don't know. Ooh, nice. Eeyore, what are you like doing? 13. Yeah, but not once you put him in there. Oh, here, sure it'll here be. let's try it. Let's do it. You know what I mean? Oh, 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 okay. I might try it. Uh, he had some discoloration on him, and I took a baby wipe to him. That's how we clean all of our plush if we can't put it in the washer. Uh, we have a lot of new subscribers. So I'll tell you that a lady once told me if you can't clean it with a baby wipe, it ain't meant to be cleaned. About plush? And she was right. There is, I mean, hardly ever do I encounter something I can't clean with a big wipe. Except right there. Look right there. Where's that big wipe? <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Where's my baby wipe? I just got a case of them delivered to our front porch. We use the Huggies Simply Clean. I get these at the Dollar Tree, except they were on sale on Amazon, so I got a case of them again. Nice. Uh, they're great. They don't smell. Do a good job. They don't leave a residue. And they're a dollar if you go to Dollar Tree. Well, maybe a dollar twenty-five now. Ooh, scandal! Ooh, right? Scandalous! <laughs> but this is all I do, guys. I just like, mm, I just get in there. Dan's not as good at getting in there. He's no, like, mm. <laughs> you gotta put some elbow grease behind it, and these little spots that's just come what, that's right That's how you have tendonitis in your elbow. I do. I have a swell bow. <laughs> <laughs> Affectionately known as swell bow. Oh, now you put more weight? What you doing? No, he need a white. He need the white yeah, one. The bigger one. Yeah. Okay. You gotta get a bigger one. Eeyore. So cute. Oh. Huh. Got. 
All right, so we're gonna try to protect his tag a little bit. Well, fan's not, okay. Oh yeah, um, that's what the box is for. I know, but make sure the tag isn't like bent up in there yeah. with, like with your hand. Okay, this guy sold for $19.95 plus $8.99 shipping. Okay. So actually did pay for priority, so amazing. I, I mean, I, yeah. I, I made that up. Oh, you made that up. Okay. So the reason I made that up is because it doesn't tell us on our pick list, and normally if it's a bigger one and it feel kind of heavy, uh, you are paid four ninety nine for first class shipping. I am corrected. You paid four ninety nine for first class, and that's what we're gonna try to send it. But normally, if I'm listing a plush that big, I just kind of guess. I do have a scale on my desk, but normally it's buried, and I kind of guess. And I'm like, is this first class? And if I think it might not be first class, I'll put eight ninety nine. But also, if the competition is fierce, which it might be for Eeyores, yeah, right. I mean, then I will I will price what the competition has for shipping. And in very rare cases, I'll do free shipping if the, all the competition is free shipping. I don't want to lose out because of shipping. Yeah, right. Oh, oh, look, you too much. I went over. No, you got to. Nope, we got to. Mm -mm. It's two gotta, ounces gotta, over because we gotta we gotta get this in something yeah, lighter. Is, well, the Amazon boxes are lighter than they these. are. That, that's a thicker box. Yeah, we keep it real in our channel. It's also a little bit larger. Does that matter? Oh no no! Oh god, I almost cut my candle. Careful, dude. Dude, tread, <laughs> tread. That almost. Let's see if this box is lighter. Okay. So this box weighs 4.6. What that box weighs? 5.4. Nope, not that box. Nope. <laughs> this is like the resellers. Nobody shows you this part. Yeah, it's true. Let's see what he weighs just in this poly. He's at 13.6. I don't know if we're going to find a box. Oh, that's got to be like 2.4. 2. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a challenge. Is it a challenge accepted? No, I just... I mean, unless we try to do like this really thin box. Do you need a thin box? No, you do need a thin box like that. That is not going to work. That thin box is good. Wait, where's it going? California. No, I didn't do that. I didn't do that. Try, I'm trying to get anything in your head. Is that donuts? Mm, donuts? Is that what it says? Uh -huh. See, he always got some heft to him. Four. See, that's still too much. If it, if it even fit it. Now he weighs thirteen point eight. Like, how come? How did he gain weight? <clears throat> I don't know. You are gained weight. Okay. Do we need to just ship him in the poly since he's only first class? Well, either that, or we got to pay up. I mean, it's... What would you guys do in this stitch vacation? I mean, it's just a plush. We do have these thick it's eBay. It's just a plush. These thick ones are better. And he, you didn't market him as new with tags either. No, I didn't. No, no, no. So. I don't know why I'm being more particular about him. I guess because he has... Jeez, no Because he has a tag? Kind of like... Should we try to just double them up? Because this is like a double. Yeah, sure. You can do that. Put them in here. I mean, we're already going to pay for up to 16 ounces because we're already past the limit. So might as well give it as much as it needs. All right, we paid $191 for this Eeyore. It's kind of high for plush for us, but... I that thick poly's better. Yep. Tight. Weigh him now, see how much he gains. Okay. Oh, 
15 ounces. 15. Okay. When we were baby eBay re resellers, we would just like pay up for all shipping. And we're like, no, stop no, don't doing do that. that. Stop <laughs> doing that. It really does add up into your profits. Tell the people about this. You guys, remember this yesterday from the bins? <laughs> so yeah. I listed this last night. We're trying to list everything from the bins that the day that we get it or before we go again. This was a Boyd's Collection Zebra from 2008. I looked it up on Worth Point because there was no comps on eBay. I looked it up on Worth Point. There was a comp for one smaller than it, but nothing that was this exact one. Uh, so I priced it at $100. Now, that's what I do. When there's no comps, <laughs> I just mark it rare because to me, if it's not on worth point. Oh, by the way, if you're uh, subscribed to this channel and if you subscribe to us on Instagram and you DM me a worth point link like one, once a month, I'll look it up for you for free. It's fine. Happy to do it as long as you send me the link. Y'all sending me the description. I'm not going to research your item. Send me the link and I'll look it up for you. Okay, hold on. I just want to see if it'll fit in this box. Okay. So, I marked it at $100, not knowing. He's back. There we go. Thank you. And I don't even know if the camera can see me. And we got an offer right away for 60 So then I was like, maybe this thing is super rare. <laughs> <laughs> and they're trying to lowball me. So what I do in this situation, rather than lose the sale, is I sleep on it. And I'm like, if it's actually rare... If it's actually rare, then more people will put in offers overnight. So we left it until we got back from the bins today at about noon or 11, and nobody had put in another offer. So I took 60 because we paid 37 cents for it. I'll take 60 all day long because I don't know. I don't know what it's actually worth, but well, apparently it's, it's, it's worth, worth 60 dollars. Because that's what somebody was willing to pay for it. And that's the lesson we try to tell people all the time: it's only worth what somebody will pay for it. But um, I've had this happen a couple of times where you wait overnight and more offers come in if it actually is indeed like worth more. And then it, you kind of get a feeling, but no other offers came in. So I was thrilled to take $60 for this dang zebra. Yeah, totally. 100% all day, every day. How much did they pay for shipping? Why doesn't it tell you on here? I don't know. Wouldn't that be great? It would. The zebra paid $8.99. Boom. <laughs> Because I said it was rare and it was $100. <laughs> if it's $100, I'm always going to charge priority shipping. Because I want to have the insurance and I want it to get there quickly. Right. Etc. We could have used a priority box and not used this. You just want to use this box. That is, it fit perfectly. You're yeah. obsessed. Oh. I'm not afraid of plush. I think I plush a lot, and I think a lot of people underprice it, and they're just like, oh, I want to move it, or oh, it's just plush. People will pay for it. 13 ounces, I but we are going to ship it priority. Right. I'm going to write a note here. Priority. And the size of the box is 9 by 5 by 5. 9 by 5 by 5. Hey, you might go cubic. <laughs> oh, I'm stopping. I give up. Maybe. Okay, next. Next. <laughs> okay. So I had to go take care of my grandmother or my mom or somebody had surgery. I had to go. So I left. <laughs> Before I left, I got this lot in a junk bag of um, mm -hmm. yep. Shopkins. Yes. And I went through and freaking identified each one on Google Lens. And then I put them in these bags and labeled them. Let's see if you can see this. So that Dan had stuff to list while I was gone. So we stayed consistent. <laughs> I don't know. I found the Shopkins website. And I, I was. I don't I, know why that was on the floor, but it was. Okay, I was. I was. No, this is this is trash. Oh, okay. okay. Um, I was into it, right? And so, I think leave it in there. Oh, you want to show the people? No, this is the. This is our. This is our receipt or our ticket because oh, we don't I have see. tickets. I can't. This. Look, these things are tiny. <laughs> <laughs> like what even? What even is this? Yeah, I don't recommend selling these individually unless you need a bunch of listings, but they have been selling. So somebody paid four ninety five for this and four ninety nine shipping. I don't know, and we probably have I don't know two hundred of them individually listed. <laughs> <laughs> Stop! Let me show them. <laughs> e. 
Okay, so anyway, you do have to know the exact name. Most people sell these in just a big old handful. Oh, where's the little triangle box? That would be perfect for the... <laughs> I think I threw it away. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> where's the ticket? Ticket. There you go. All right, so this is going to go out at 0. 0.5 ounces. Yo, someone paid money Round for that. To one. Really? Yeah. Hmm. yeah. You can't do half an ounce. Okay. Um, Did not know. All right, next up. These are my favorite brand of jeans to wear and to resell. Usually they're thrashed at the thrift store. There's, I think the, I think the These are little ones, right? These are under a pound, I believe. Did he really just say that, y'all? Did he just really say that? They're little ones. These were my jeans that he's calling them the little ones. They are. <laughs> Oh, yes, yes, <laughs> Okay, these are Democracy. These were my old jeans. They no longer fit me. So I sold them. I sold a, I listed a bunch of them. These are the first ones to sell. Uh, it's not a high-end brand at all, but they do fit. Uh, they have plus sizes and petite sizes, which I think is really great. They're very stretchy, and they fit curvy figures. These are the only jeans I've ever bought in my entire life. Oh, there's a little something on there, huh? That ever fit me. Where'd that baby wipe go? <laughs> Give me the baby wipe. Don't leave me alone. I'm trying to make us better. Okay, that doesn't look like it's coming out with a baby wipe. Nope. Where's the Sharpie? <laughs> Yo, go. this is what you gotta do. That's what you gotta do. It's called upcycling, man. As long as it's not a bother to her. Right. Whoever's wearing it, I don't care. We'll sharpie a jean. We'll sharpie it. I did. Sharpied it. It was just a little teeny tiny speck. Okay. So. Democracy is a great brand to look out for, but normally the waistband, they have this like special stretchy waistband that fits curvy figures. It'll be really, really stretched out or the thighs will be stretched out. So you just got to look at it really carefully, but they will flip normally for around 25 to 30 because new they're about 60. Although their prices have been going up. Okay. Everybody's prices have been going up. You're right. Not so tight. Do yes, I like it that way. Thank you. you can cut right there. No, 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 no. These weigh 13 ounces. So they're going to go first class. And I did just charge first class. We did weigh these when we were listening to make sure. Because jeans, you know, you never know. You do never know. So I think these, these are over a pound. These are level 99. This is another pretty good brand resell. They're just over a pound. Yep. They're at 1.5. So these will have to go in a padded, I mean, in a flat rate envelope. Yep. They're going to California. So sometimes we check a regional box if it's going to Texas or something, and it'll be just as cheap when we put it in a box. Or cheaper, even. Or cheaper, yeah. yeah. I like how you always think that's going to hit my head, and it never I is know, ever going to hit my head. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so these are level 99. They sell these at department stores. They also sell certain ones at Anthropology. This was one of the ones they sold at Anthropology. I don't just name drop that, I hate that. People would just be like, oh, level 99, Anthropology. This is not an exclusive brand to them, but this style was sold at Anthropology. You know how I know that? Because I found a stock photo from hey, Anthropology. There you go. <laughs> So I've always found that a little bit confusing. Anthropology sells their own clothes and other people's yeah. clothes? Okay. Yeah, they have their own house brands, just like Nordstrom's. I see. Nordstrom's. Nordstrom. Uh, and then they, and like I said, like all level 99 jeans aren't sold at Anthropology. Okay. They're just like, right. I think I used to sell level 99 at Stitch Fix, actually. Anybody work at Stitch Fix? Can you remember level 99? seem to remember that. Okay, there you go. Okay. And last one? Yep. Sweet. These were in the death pile. Go. 
I know you listed these, but don't let me get this baby wipe out here. <laughs> Clean them up. Uh, these are Patagonia. You know, I am not a Patagucci believer. I just, I think it's over. Um, I'm, Overrated. You know, it's a good brand. Yeah. I love what they're doing for the environment. Love it. But the resale value is, it's okay. I'll take Escandar over Patagonia any day if you know what any I mean. Any day. So those shoes are in great condition and they sold for $22. Okay. Okay. Where are they going? California. California, man. So maybe a... So maybe we should check a different size box because maybe, this regional might yeah. be too expensive. We live in Dallas, Texas, so California's far. Let me see what it says. Let me see how much so they weigh. We were going to ship those... They're over a pound. Regional, it'd be 12 bucks. So we need to put these in a plat of flat rate immediately. Yes. <laughs> Some people ask why if we ever put shoes in pad of flat rates. We do sometimes since they only paid $22 for these. Okay. I ain't trying to eat $4 for you and your Patagonia. Perfect. All right. Let me get these shipping labels printed out here. Flat rate added $8.20. That's okay. what I'm saying. If you're paying twenty dollars for something, I am got gonna, and I think they probably only paid eight dollars shipping. So there you go. That's what's happening. Yeah. Shipping and handling. Okay, I so, just handled it. So the zebra is only seven eighty eight for them now. Okay, zebra. I mean, it should they should charge you first class rate. Let me be mad. Let me be mad. When I think about it. Oh, this is so much quicker than yesterday. Yesterday was ridiculous. Thank you for those of you who stuck around yesterday. Seriously. For the entire two hours. It was crazy. We have ten or nine now orders waiting to be paid for. Uh, I think it's down to six. Oh, is it? Did you cancel some? Oh, we need to update the people. Yesterday eBay relisted one of our solds yeah. and, and we did talk to the eBay customer service. They told us to cancel the order and it won't affect us. We have yet to check if it's affected us. But they said if it affects your seller rating, let us know and we'll fix it. I'm well, like, what do you really? think I'm doing right now? Really? I'm trying to be proactive about this. So we gotta keep checking it and if our if we get a ding, then we have to contact them again. Okay, here's the Shopkins. Like, oh gosh. <laughs> we have to contact them again. Ay ay ay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you guys ever had a sold listing relisted? This is the Patagucci shoes. Oh. Okay, this is the zebra. Zebra? Zebra. jeans. Democracy jeans. I am going to work on, y'all, I'm doing a recycling video and then I use all this plastic packing material. I'm going to work on that my goal i'm gonna get the, I, i've heard the compostable things have to be professionally composted and people don't do it right i'm gonna figure this out it's my goal okay i am gonna use what we have though since we got it for free that's true and then i'm gonna figure it out i promise and this stuff too it drives me nuts it's all waste Ooh. Right. Okay. okay. Shipping is packing's done. Gotta go drop all this stuff off at the post office. Check in with Mojo and then bins run the hall. numbers. Oh, bins hall and then the numbers. So stick around, people. It's your moment with Mojo. Say hi, Igloo Cat. Hi. It's post office time. Did you learn a lot about fabrics today? Good boy. All right, guys, the post office run has been completed. Everything's been dropped off and scanned. 
I'm back at the office, so we now get. <laughs> hey, everybody! I am back home from the post <laughs> no, office. You, you keep the previous. <laughs> I do no, not. You know, <laughs> it's too good. Woo! Okay, I'm back home. It's time to find out what we really made. Action! Hi. Okay, we're gonna put these into Vendu together since there's not that many. I just want you guys to see if you're new here what is going on. We're using Vendu to delist and mark as sold, but I want you to see what's going on with the fees because, yeah. All right, we sold these Patagonia shoes for $30.99 all in. The buyer paid that. That is the cost that they paid plus the shipping that we charged. Right. Nothing to do with tax. Cost of item was $378. We had a marketplace fee of four thirty three, dollars and the shipping we paid was eight twenty. That leaves us with a total profit right here of fourteen sixty eight dollars on that pair of shoes. All right. Not wonderful, but eh. No. Okay, the Boyd's Bear Zebra. This was a good one. Good one. <laughs> Boyd's. Hopefully we got some things at the bin today that were good. I know, right? We're going to mark this as sold. I had it listed for $99.95. So it sold for $68.99 all in. Awesome. And we paid $0.37. Cents. It would help if I typed in the right number. It's fine. Marketplace fees were $8.86, and the shipping was $7.88. We shipped it priority. It's $51.88. That is a nice profit for a stuffed animal. Uh, we spent $20 at the bins yesterday, so this more than doubled what we spent all day. Sweet. Hopefully we can overnight sell something to pay for each haul, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm hopeful that that will happen. Uh, level 99, we'll let you know. Just keep watching. <laughs> uh, these are marking as sold. All in, $30.98. The cost of the item was $5.40. Lord. Marketplace fees. You can tell that we bought some of this stuff early. Yeah, for sure. We've been reselling for a little over three years now, and some of our... $13.92. Some of our original things just we were not good buys. Democracy. Or there we pay too much. $39.39. I'm looking for the SKU. I told you I listed a bunch of these. Okay. Mark is sold. All in. These went for $34.94. No cost to us. Marketplace fees were $4.60 and the shipping was $5.96. We made $24.38 on those jeans that were sitting in my closet. Wonderful. Get your stuff out of your closet. List it. Right. Okay, Eeyore. We have like a million Eeyores. So we got to find the <laughs> right one. Eeyore. Look at all these Eeyores. Okay. 14. This one. Oh, they're both in cape. <gasps> Did we ship the wrong one? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know which one they ordered. Uh-oh. Okay, note to self, don't put two Eeyores in the same bin. <laughs> Maybe we got lucky. Okay, they ordered this one. Well, the one we sent was this one. Okay. So let's, because the title, let's <laughs> Crap. <laughs> uh -oh. oh, we might be sending two Eeyores. I mean, that's the good thing about Plush. We don't have much into it. Yeah, so it's that's like true. not that big of a deal right? it's like you obviously like eeyore here's the right one keep the bonus <laughs> <laughs> bonus eeyore i think we're good i don't think we're good I picture think looks the same they both look the no we sent the wrong one. Oh no <laughs> all right well i'll send the guy a message i'm sure it's i'm, I'm sure it's not going to be the biggest deal ever <laughs> We sent him the more expensive one. Oh, crap. All right, well, we'll see what he says. Well, that's what I'm saying, though. Like, maybe he'll take it because it does have a tag and it's more expensive. Yeah. Whoopsie. We sent you the vintage Eeyore, and yeah. sorry. Okay, well, we're going to take it down because we saw it. We don't own it anymore. <laughs> but I need to rectify this on Vendu. Oh, my gosh, you guys. Dang it. What are the chances of us having two in the same bin? I know, right? Cost of the item, 191 I should have checked. Marketplace fees, 343 <laughs> Shipping was 611 Oh, man. Anyway, on this Eeyore, <laughs> we made 1349 Gosh, dang it. 
All right, and then the Shopkins. Okay, this is the Apple Blossom. <laughs> apple Blossom. Don't judge us, ultra rare. Right? <laughs> they have different categories for these things. I cannot. Sold. Okay, all in, 994. I can't believe it. Cost that. of the item, we averaged at 10 cents. Marketplace fees were 153, and shipping was 358. We had 473 on the little guy. All right. Five dollar bill, basically. All right, what did we make today, even though we sent the wrong viewer? Yes. You see, people, even we make mistakes. Oh my gosh, Not we make mistakes we. all the time. Right? All the time. All right, February 1st, today we sold six items and we made $200 in revenue and 123 in profit. Eh. It's okay. It's okay. We're climbing back. It's a weekday. We need to put on a sale during the week. We need to figure out that strategy because we sell much more on the weekend because we have a sale going on. I'm not sure if that's true. the reason. We should probably do like a weekday 10% and like a weekend. Something to look into for sure. All right, let's look at our bins all haul. All right, let's look at all this stuff. I can't believe I sent the wrong Eeyore. <laughs> Embarrassing. Okay, so the first thing I got was this robe from Pottery Barn. I did comp it in store since it was so big. I don't know, it says pottery. Zoom in on their tag right there. Pottery Barn. Hold on, almost got it. Got it. And I thought this was Barefoot Dreams at first. It feels almost identical. And then I looked up the comps and they were okay. So I think that it should go around 40 or 50. Nice. Yeah, I almost really thought you were getting that for yourself because it's I so wish. large and fuzzy. It's a large. <laughs> me. Um, we got some clothes today, which isn't normal for us at the bins. Here, can this you is... hand me that? It's causing a little glare issue. Thank you. Okay, this is pink, but the reason I got it, Victoria's Secret pink, but the reason I got it is it's tie-dye, it's long-sleeved, and it's cropped. Okay, This cool. is like pretty in style and it's very lightweight. So like you guys know, we, we go for higher ASP, which is average sales price, but sometimes it's nice to have some lower price things in your shop to get things moving. Good so, strategy, yeah, for sure. If they're gonna sell. So I did look at sell-through rate and most of them are pretty good. This is one of my favorite brands to sell. Hold on a second. Boom, got it. Sundance. This is just a basic Henley, but this will flip. I'll price it competitively. I didn't have any flaws that I saw. Unless you guys see any on camera, let me know. <laughs> With any of this stuff, sometimes flaws come out on camera. That's true. I got this vintage slip. They sell <laughs> all day, every day for me. It's very nice. It's just a union made. doesn't have a brand. I got this because I can't not. Champagne of beers, man. <laughs> you can't not. That's true. Can't not. I, I pick up every Miller High Life shirt I ever. It's from Miller Coors. Oh, it's actually from Miller Coors. Yeah. Wow. And it's an extra large. <clears throat> These things are warm. They just came out of the heater. <laughs> uh, okay. I got this dress. I just thought it was gorge and it felt really nice. It's Eliza J and it's a 10 petite. Look how pretty. Very nice. I love having dresses of all sizes in our closet. Dresses have been doing well. Uh, we have one Yeti shirt listed in our closet and people are fighting over it right now. <laughs> and I'm not backing down, so this is a Yeti. Very nice. T-shirt, I think the selfie rate's great. And it's got some kind of weird, you know, outdoorsy beer drinker people on it. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what you should put in the description. Yes. <laughs> oh gosh, that's a size small. Um, this went in the heater and probably shouldn't have. Yeah, now it's all cracked and peeling. <laughs> Okay, so these got ruined in the heater. Oh, my bad. Dang, that's unfortunate. These are G-Star Raw. These are really good. This is a really, are they really... totally dead? Really? Did I kill them? Yeah, I think you killed them. All right, well, let's... This is a good brand, y'all. Maybe maybe they're not dead. Uh... That, that may have been there before. I don't know. I didn't... Uh, to be honest, I didn't look very closely at them at the bins. Oh, okay. So... Well, the outside looks okay. The zippers are still intact. This brand is is pretty killer with pants. It's pretty, pretty great. Yeah. Um, it's been around since the 90s. It's really big in the UK. I'll try. We'll see what we can do. Okay. All right. I got this little guy. Despicable Me 3 is, like, big with kids or something. I don't I don't know. I'm just not. I just don't know. But this is a Despicable Me 3 with this little unicorn hoodie. It's very cute. Okay. So I had to have cute. this. Yep. Uh, and then I got some children's clothes. There's a lot of cute baby clothes. So if you sell baby clothes, Chelsea, I'm talking to you. Let me know if I did okay. 
What's this one? Let me focus in here. Girl, I don't know about brands starting oh. out. I don't I I don't know. But what I do know Okay. is this is cute AF. Look at this thing. Oh my god. It's so cute. This little cable knit sweater and it's got little button detail. I mean it's just cute. This has got it. It's gotta be something. Yeah. So I'll look that up and then if, if there's no comps, I'll just price with my heart. <laughs> I got this little for Easter pictures. Look at this little thing. It's just a hand knit cap. Oh, that's it's kind of oh there it is. Actually, this is from Target. Oh man. I think it would still do okay. Yeah. So cute. Little chickity. Mm -hmm. And then I don't know any of these brands. Sorry guys, but that's why this is Baby Crew. I know Cru Riley and Crew or something is really good. Let me see if I can get in there. Okay. One of the things we love about going to the bins is trying new things because it's kind of. These watermelon buttons, I had to. What was <laughs> oh, I to do? Yeah. You, Little you. seersucker dress. What was I to do? And then it was like all in one bin, so I just got it all. This is another really cute fruit inspired. This is from Okie Doki. I don't know. Y'all tell me. Okay. We encourage you to learn about brands in a really non committal way like the bins. <laughs> Look how cute. Oh, wow. Y'all, mm -mm. forget about it. Got that. I got an Anaya, uh, Aiden and Anias another blanket. I'm stain treating the We've been finding one. that brand a lot lately. I know. I'm, I know what to, I know what it feels like now. Okay. It's like Lululemon. I can feel it out. Yeah. It's in the. They have these big bins of um, textiles. I just feel it, pull it. It's mine. <laughs> so I'm stain treating the other one. I'll let you know how that goes. Okay. Um, I got this plush because Aunt Dan told me this is good. He didn't tell me the plush is good, but he said Adventure Time's good. Yeah, people like Adventure Time. And it has the tag on it. This one is ha Hambo. Hambo. No clue. Oh, not me either. I didn't even comp it. <laughs> but New It Tags Cartoon Network plush normally will flip for us. Yes. I got another one of these because we already have one. So I can just do quantity two. I don't know what this is. That's a Disney something. Oh, one more baby clothes. Look at this cute oh. little crab. Marilyn crab. You had to. You had to. You can't help yourself. This is Jetterbugs. I think... No, I don't think this is anything, but it's very cute. Okay. And I, I can use... No, I got a new light box over here. Oh, let me... Oh, there it is. So I'm going to list all this little stuff by myself in the light box. Sweet. And then we can kind of double our listings. I got this little guy. What is it? Oh, I got him. I don't know him, <laughs> but it's Chosun. And that's oh, one of our it? favorite brands to sell. Oh, nice. Okay. We love selling Chosun. Yeah. So I'm going to look this up. And Easter, you know, look like Easter or something. Yep. Okay. <gasps> New Attacks Jelly Cat. Love it. From the bins. Love it. This is the Fuddle, Medium Fuddle Wuddle Monkey. There you go. If you guys don't know anything about Jelly Cats, they all have names. And if... So it's you can usually if it doesn't have the tag with the name on it, you can Google lens it and then usually find what it is. I got these. Oh, of course you got those. I've actually bought these for two people as gifts, and I know somebody else that might want one. Mm -hmm. Yep. Drinking buddies. These gag gifts from this company called. <sighs> is it Fred? I don't no. think it's Fred, but it looks like Fred. Yeah. Fred is great. We buy this stuff and flips like crazy. Not not for a lot, but like a good conversion. Like this will flip. Yep brand new uh i got this which what? i was super stoked about i what thought it that? i thought it was a poly pocket okay and so i picked it up because i'm Zoom always looking for poly pockets hey that's got pokemons on it right it was pokemon and then i opened it up yeah and then i saw that there were like all the little stuffs in here oh nice and a pikachu i don't know what i'm saying y'all but this is a pikachu <laughs> and it's all in here i think this is worth like 40 bucks very very cool so i'll try that and then the last thing was this book so, international banking, except that it's a safe. Get out what, of here. What? <laughs> and Dan figured out how to open it because there was something in it. So, what? I was like, I have to buy this to yeah. know what's in it. What was so in it? now I'm going to sell this because it has the instructions and you can get into it. I thought we were going to have to break it open. Did not have to break it. So, I'll sell this. And then inside of it, y'all tell me what this stuff is because I don't know. This is from Mexico, but it's sterling silver. Okay, let me get nice and zoomed in on that guy. Oh, that's cool. Mm, it's, a, it's a brooch. A brooch. Okay. Okay, and then this little number is like a deco brooch. It doesn't say much, but oh, that's why cool. were these things in a locked box? I don't know. I was hoping there was money in there. I know, right? And then this little guy, another brooch, also looks pretty deco to me. Very cool. And finally... 
Oh my god, that's so so it's tiny. It's so I can't even... tiny. I'm gonna wear this forever. Hold well, on, first me... I'm gonna comp it. Let me try to focus on it. I can't. Oh, there it is. It says "Most Secret." Is there anything inside there? Yes. Inside the little door. This is like a little pen, a little charm for oh, a necklace. Oh my god. <laughs> no, no, just stay where you were. Let me try to. Oh wow, I got it. Oh, that's so cool. There's a little heart inside. <laughs> it's so cute. Oh, I'm gonna wear this forever. Yes. Okay. So we ended up with 22 items today. We were much more selective. Hopefully they're good. We'll let you know. I'm going to list them all today. Yep. And our average cost of goods was 79 cents. Perfect. Less than a dollar. We love it. Clothes at our Goodwill bins are more expensive than hard goods. And they're just not as good of a value. But there wasn't a lot of hard goods today. Actually, uh, hmm? we had to have a little meeting at our bins. <laughs> I felt like I was at preschool. Seriously. So they gathered everyone at the bins into the back room in the back corner everyone had to be in this little corner and then they made everyone get really quiet and then lady's like i have i have to talk to y'all literally that's what she said and then so she takes down her mask uh, and she's like giving us the rules about the shoes i know y'all saw the shoes come out i don't want any running no, i'm gonna kick you out if you run or if you try to hit somebody i was like what <laughs> this is right when somebody. we right when we got there i was like I literally felt like we were in preschool getting yeah. yelled out by the principal. And it was weird today, too. Like, we showed up, I guess, in between after they'd opened up the hard goods side, and they wouldn't let us in. We had to wait outside for, like, 20 minutes. Because the clothing side, they close off the clothing side when they're restocking it, and I guess they didn't want us walking through while they were restocking or something. Our so, bins is strange. So everybody that was already in the hard goods section got first pickings. Yeah. And all the carts, and it was... Mm, yeah, I don't know about our bins. I also... We gotta go earlier. Uh, also, we gotta go earlier. It opens at 8 now. Ugh. Also, <laughs> um, uh, they didn't switch things out. We left yesterday at 11 a.m. And there were still bins out today when we got there at 10. Even when we left, we left at 10. There were still bins from yesterday at 8 a.m. Same stuff. Or yeah. 9 a.m. Yeah, I remember looking at some of that same stuff. Same two rows. Two complete rows of hard goods were exactly the same. What? Very, very strange. So Dallas does not switch ovens. They switch ovens three times a day. That's it. Three times. If you go after one o'clock, they don't even switch in it. And then they keep that stuff all the way through the next day. I know you guys, like the one in Fort Worth, they switch them out constantly. And most of you guys have bins that switch out constantly. Ours do not. So you get there at 8 a.m. and or bust. Yeah. So we're going to try 8 a.m. Mm. Oh, Lord. We're going to try. Pray for us. <laughs> okay, I also wanted to mention that I get my office supplies at the bins and I don't count them at my cost of goods. So today I got this uh, thing of dry erase markers and Sharpies. Yay! We always need all of these. So this I made sure true. that they were working and they are. Okay. And then yesterday I got this whole big bucket of um, binder clips. Oh man, we love binder clips. We love them. So <laughs> I do, I think that's a good tip. Hot, Hot tip! tip! <laughs> that phrase is trademark Hustle Cup Inc. I think it's a good <laughs> I think it's a good idea if you find and also gift bags and tissue paper and packing supplies. I get them at the bins. Get it at the bins. It's Why super not? It's cheap. Right? And I don't think people think of that when they're at the bins. They're looking for stuff to resell, but also you can help on your reselling journey by buying office supplies. Right. So there's your, your tips for the day. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for hanging out and we will see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye. Bye.